Now we're going to start looking at some statistics and if you look at the start of your chapter in your textbook uh, you'll see these are the dot points, the things that we are going to go through. Um, the main thing we're going to talk about today is the idea of sampling from population and what a population is. All right, so that's where we're going to spend our time today. Um, if we come down to uh, a definition about the population out of your textbook, all right, so um, sample, the population is a collection of items that are going to be considered and a sample is in fact a small part of that population. So if we look at an example um, that might make sense to you, um, if we have a, a population, so we might have the population of Victor Harbour High School, that's our population. So if we're looking at that value, um, then we would be looking at our population being something like uh, 720 students. All right. Now, if I want to know how the student body is uh, feeling about a particular topic, then I might need to do a little survey of that. And we'd try and do a random survey. Uh, and that survey might be... Um, just change the colour there. So that survey might be um, a group of students that I might take from SAC or uh, it could be a class that I pick or it could be a student from each year level and that sample might be only say 30 kids. All right. So this is my sample and this is my population. All right. So you're taking a small portion of that. An example of what we might talk about if you're thinking of the AFL um, the Crows have got about 50,000 members and then obviously to, to work out whether they wanted to move to Adelaide Oval or stay at Amy Stadium, they actually surveyed the whole population. All right? So everybody who was a member of the Crows got, um, got a survey and they, they had to take into account everybody's point of view. Now, if you look at the information you might get from the population um, survey, you know, it probably would be pretty close to what you would expect if you, you say you picked a random sample of the population. So instead of doing 50,000 people in terms of surveys, you might only have to do about three or 4,000 people, all right? So it's obviously a lot cheaper to do, a lot quicker to do a sample of the population, and then you get a true representation of what they actually want to do, all right? So, so we're going to use um, um, that concept in our statistics and certainly in your investigation you're going to be talking about those those sort of concepts. Now there's different types of data that we're going to be looking at so um, the sort of data that we'll be looking at will be classified as discrete or continuous. Right, some examples of discrete data uh, they are things where you have a whole number, all right? So, so the, the, the main thing about this is you're going to have a whole number, right? So it has to be, you know, a specific value. So you might say uh, a, an example of discrete value might be the number of people that you have in a group, all right? You can't have a half a person. Um, it might be the, the age of someone in terms of, you know, how old they are in terms of a birthday. Right, so it could be the number of cards. Right. When we start talking about continuous data, it doesn't have to have an exact value. So we will have basically in this one here we'll have decimals. Right. So uh, if I was looking at your weight or your height or your um, example there, you know, that there's two very, very simple examples of what you need to consider about continuous data. So anything that doesn't have to have an exact value uh, would be an example of continuous data. Right? So we need to consider that when we start doing surveys about whether the data should be uh, discrete or whether the data is going to be continuous because that will make a big difference about the sort of data we will collect it in itself. Right, I want to do one very quick example of um, idea of a survey. So the question might be that you have gone out and you've gone to a lake and one day you caught um, 
out of this whole lake, you caught a sample of, say, 500 fish. All right, and you tag them. And then what you've done is you released all those fish. So you've caught 500 fish, you released them. And then what you do is you come back another day, all right, and you collect fish again. All right, so you might collect another, you know, you might collect 100 fish. All right, so I'll collect 100 fish, that's my population of fish that I catch. And out of all those fish that I catch, all right, maybe 30 of those have tags. All right, so, so these are my tags, the ones inside this little um, circle there. This represents my, my sample. And the other big circle is the population of fish. Now, this is how, you know, parks and all those sort of people and fisheries actually estimate how many fish there are in the wild. Because um, you can't go and count them all, of course. So what you do here is you look at the population that's a ratio between these two. So if I said to you down here that the population of fish to and the ones that we caught is, is that, then this has to be in the same ratio. So in other words, 100 has to be in the same ratio as a, as a 30. Because right? this is a representation of the whole population, isn't it? Right? So if I want to rearrange that, then all I have to do is bring the 500 up. So 500 times by 100, divided by 30. All right, so you can get your calculator to do that, or you can just go, that's equal to 5,000 over 300. So go to my calculator, 5,000 divided by 300, I mean 33, is going to be 1,600. Obviously, we can't have a, um, a decimal point when we're looking at the number of fish. So let's round that. In this particular case, let's just round that up, right? So we've got that many fish uh, in our population based on our tagging scenario, all right? So uh, if we had a bigger population, we'd probably expect to get fewer tag fish when we collected our 100 fish, all right? And obviously, the bigger the sample that you're going to pick, then um, the more accurate it's going to be to the real population representation, isn't it? All right, so that's the key thing there. Now, the question might be, how big How big does the sample need to be to get a true representation of the population? How big does the sample need to be? All right, now, if that's uh, something that you want to work out, well, the general rule is, if the population all right, is equal to n people, or n, then the sample needs to be equal to the square root of n. All right, so in other words, if I had 100 people, all right, so if I had 100 people, then if I take the square root of um, my sample needs to be the square root of 100, which we know is 10 people. So I think that makes sense. All right, so that's a true, that's a that's a representation of, uh, gives you a bit of an idea about how big your sample needs to be. Uh, and that could be a question that you might get in a test or whatever. But it gives you an indication, more importantly, of what you would need to do when you're doing your investigation. So if you're looking at a sample of students, that will tell you exactly how many students that you would need to do to get a representation of that. Now, um, obviously, we've got some questions to do out of your textbook uh, for the first two chapters. I've sort of covered what you need to pretty well do for those. So it's really about getting the terminology, getting a, reviewing what you probably already know, um, and having a go at those questions. So good luck with them, and I'll talk to you in class. All right, so see you later.